Hey everybody, this is John from Slash Bash, and today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. If you're new to the channel, then subscribe, and make sure you've clicked on notifications so you don't miss out on the fun. In our first story, the Harry Potter Society and the Choosing Beggar Invasion. Let's jump right in. My former university has a variety of social societies that you can join, one of which is the Harry Potter Society. Every year, the Harry Potter Society does a variety of activities to fundraise for the end of year ball, the most profitable of which is the Diagon Alley Markets. Every year, usually on the 1st of September, we make and buy a variety of Harry Potter themed items, food, merch, etc. and sell it at very cheap prices. Usually, it's just a fun casual day where we hope to make some extra profit. Then, 2019 happened. That year, we decided to hold our markets on a Saturday instead of on the 1st. We prepped stationery, bath products, sausage sizzles, baked goods, etc. and prepared for maybe a few hundred uni students over the entire day. The local radio and news picked up on the event and reported about it. And all of a sudden, we were getting families coming, people coming from other suburbs, and even people making special trips into our city, not really big enough to be called a city, just to attend our markets. Now keep in mind, we're a small university society. We were planning on 10 or so stalls with a fairly minimal amount of stock. We literally drained our society bank account to pay for what we have, and some of the execs even gave the society loans to make up the shortfall. So how did the day go? We had thousands of people show up, literally thousands. It only took a few hours for our stalls to start running out of stock. On the positive side, we made a great amount of money, which funded both our end of year ball and the 2020 ball, which we weren't able to fundraise for. Here's where the choosing beggars come in though. We had advertised this as an all day event, provided that stocks last. Again, we were expecting a few hundred people, not a few thousand. We sold out of the most popular items within a few hours and were all wrapped up by lunch. Anyone who came late in the day were able to listen to the music we had going, enjoy the free activities, but weren't able to buy anything, and the choosing beggars were pissed. We very quickly started getting hate mail on our society page, with angry messages being sent to our execs. We were blasted for over-advertising. We never asked for the advertisement, and received a lot of angry letters about how people came from out of town for our event and ended up disappointed. Again, we're a small uni society of a few dozen people. We all worked round the clock to produce what we had. Our president even ended up crying after the event due to the public backlash we received. We had to finally post a public apology for not living up to expectations on our page just to make people stop. I'm not sure what will be happening with the Harry Potter Society this year for Diagon Alley Markets. I graduated at the end of last year, and I likely won't have the time to attend this year. But when I think about the worst choosing beggar behavior, I think about how dozens of strangers spewed hate and anger all over a small group of university students because their free self-organized event didn't live up to the expectations of a pack of choosing beggars. In story number two, what do you get when you offer a free kitchen? That's right, a choosing beggar. Two weeks ago, my husband and I moved into a bigger apartment. We moved so our kid can have her own room when she grows up. Thus, we had to clear the old apartment of all the furniture we didn't want to take with us. Most of the stuff is 20 plus years old and came to us from previous renters, but it is in acceptable shape. We were also including a functioning kitchen with oven, dishwasher, etc. I put it on a platform in our country similar to Craigslist. I put it up as free, but needs to be disassembled and carried away yourself. Since my husband's back is hurt and I'm too weak to carry heavy cupboards, we wouldn't be able to help. I made this very clear in the ad. The ad is only up for 10 minutes until someone responded saying that he really wants the kitchen. He will also take any other furniture we have and that I can take down the ad because he would totally take everything. I thought, wow, that's lucky. He seems nice and took down the ad. I gave him my phone number, sent him some more photos of the other furniture and we agreed that he would come Friday afternoon. 
I again made it clear that he would need two people for this, so he must bring someone. He said he already understood he would come with a friend and a small truck. So we waited for Friday. I messaged him to find out when exactly he would be here. He wrote back saying he would come Saturday morning instead because his truck broke down. Alright then, fine with me. On Saturday, he arrived by himself, telling me a weird sob story that his morning was horrible, his friend couldn't make it, and so on. You have to know that he was a small guy on the heavy side. When he took the first set of stairs up to the elevator, he was so out of breath he could barely talk. It was about 10 steps. I told you that you need two people. We can't help you carry the stuff down. But I will need some help with the heavy things. Well, yes. This is exactly the problem, and this is why I told you to bring someone. My husband has back problems he can't help, and I don't think you can do this by yourself. Don't worry, I can do it by myself, no problem. He started to disassemble the kitchen and nearly broke off the water tap because he couldn't lift the top cabinets. When he had also made a dent in the water heater, I had had enough and told him I'm sorry, but he had to leave the kitchen. He's only going to ruin it and then no one else would want it. My husband, nice as he is, said he would look around the apartment and the basement to see what the choosing beggar could take with him so he wouldn't have come for nothing. This took about an hour because choosing beggar pointed at everything. Can I have this? What about this? He looked in every box and touched everything. When my husband gave him an old rabbit cage, Choosing Beggar promptly opened it and emptied all the straw out onto the basement floor, then instantly pointed to the next thing. In the end, he drove away with a nearly full truck. In hindsight, I should have thrown him out when I realized he came alone. I guess he was that kind of person who responds to every ad, expecting the people to be kind enough to do the dirty work for him. I put the ad up again, and a day later, a guy came with two helpers and took the kitchen without problems. Story 3. An old and distant friend tricked me. So, this person I knew from school a while back contacted me to help with a work for college, a 3D model for an architectural class. I have some years of experience with many 3D programs and thought, yeah, sure. It wasn't the first time I did this type of project, and I thought I could do the 3D part in half a week. I only needed a guide on specifications for the model, a common request I usually have for this type of work, and I did ask for a payment, but it had quite a friend's discount. What ensued was that this person came on saying I would have full liberty on the design of the project, only giving very few loose details on it. Then afterwards, adding request after request each time I thought I was finished. Many times the request required some specific knowledge, so I had to dig into it and problem solve every new request and note it down. Essentially, I was fooled into doing a project for their thesis with full research on my end and didn't notice it till too late. I thought that if I'm not delivering right away, it's my fault and I should work harder. First. It was just the design in a certain style. Then it had to have the specifications X, then Y, then Z. Then it needed another type of build, then another, then designing parking lots, then road flows, then target functions for each type of building. After a while, I was already pretty pissed, but always thought it was near the end and wanted to finish things on good terms with the person. It turns out, a full month went with me being fooled into adding a massive amount of details into the project, and then my anxiety kicked in. I had to stop it, and so I decided to pull the plug. In the end, I felt that I had already agreed to do this person's work. In a way, I was the one doing the leading on for nothing, as I always said I could handle it, but decided I had enough, and to not feel like trash, I ended up giving the person all I had done free of charge as it was an unfinished project. In the end, the person complained it was my fault for them failing their deadline. They complained that I still had stuff to do, they were demanding and they criticized me for failing to do my part, which was the whole project, not just the 3D part. Now I'm feeling overworked, underpaid and unappreciated, which is messing with my anxiety a lot. Lesson learned. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. 
If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then hit that subscribe button. Click on notifications, you know the drill. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.